What's up everyone, Aaron Bewley here. I wanted to take a second to create a quick video about Spectre and Meltdown. The vulnerabilities and how they are exploited are very complex, but I wanna keep it as simple as possible. So what's going on? At the most basic level, there are security flaws within CPUs. The way that they've been designed for performance reasons has made them specifically vulnerable to certain types of attacks. The resulting issue is that attackers can get access to cache data they shouldn't normally be able to see. They're basically tricking the CPU into revealing things it shouldn't. So processors, right? What processors? Well, it's basically all of them. But be cool, be cool. Let's talk it through. We got no food. We got no jobs. Our pets' heads are falling off. Okay, just calm down. I said be cool, be cool. All right, so let me cover it in two parts so that way I'm not jumping back and forth between Spectre and Meltdown and potentially confusing you. So to start off, if you just wanna get into some technical documentation, I've got a bunch of links in the description below, but Project Zero at Google dives into it pretty deep Pretty quick. Let me read this intro sentence to you. We have discovered that CPU data cache timing can be abused to efficiently leak information out of misspeculated execution, leading to, at worst, arbitrary virtual memory read vulnerabilities across local security boundaries in various contexts. All right, so what does that even mean? Here's a different version of essentially the same sentence. Scott perfectly nails the non-technical version of it in this one tweet. Explaining meltdown to non-technical spouse. You know how we finish each other's sandwiches? No, sentences but you guessed sandwiches and it was in your mind for an instant and it was a password and someone stole it while it was there, fleeting. Oh, that is bad. So the CPU design that he's referencing there is something called speculative execution. So that's what the spouse just did attempting to finish the sentence in this example. It's actually really smart when it comes to computing. It boosts CPU speed tremendously if the CPU can basically predict what you're going to execute on next. However, this exposed data that that spouse was not supposed to have, sandwiches. All right, so that covers the gist of it at a high level. Back to Spectre and Meltdown specifically. There's essentially three different variants of the CPU vulnerability. Variant one and two are Spectre, variant three is Meltdown. Think of the names more as just brand names or codes for the actual issues. They aren't something specific like a virus or a Trojan or something like that. All right, so let's dig in a little bit more and let's start with Spectre. Spectre violates the isolation that typically occurs between applications. Applications. It allows a hacker to trick an application to give up sensitive data to another application. Essentially, apps can read memory from another application on the same system. This one is much harder to take advantage of, but is also a lot harder to fix. It's not really a single vulnerability that can be patched, but rather more of an unknown number of vulnerabilities that can take advantage of speculative execution. Remember the finish each other's sandwiches example? That's speculative execution. So how does this work with Spectre then? Well, Spectre focuses on a specific type of speculative execution called CPU branch prediction. It speculates on what you're about to execute on and preloads code, and the goal is to force reveal code that should be inaccessible. It's manipulating a process to reveal something that should be hidden. So let me read this nerdy statement from CERT, and then we'll talk about the simplified version. So CERT explains that the attack doesn't allow a user space application to cross the privilege boundary into kernel memory space, but rather while that application is executing code in kernel space, it can pull kernel memory contents up into user space memory. So what does that remind you of? I can't jump into your mind and read your thoughts, but if we can together access a shared space and get you to reveal secrets. Look, if you want my help, you're gonna have to be completely open with me. I need to know my way around your thoughts better than your wife, better than your therapist, better than anyone. If this is a dream and you have a safe full of secrets, I need to know what's in that safe. In order for this all to work, you need to completely let me in. Enjoy your evening, gentlemen. In that scene, Cobb extracts Saito's secrets by watching his eyes look at that spot on the wall. Think of those two guys in that scene as two separate applications in the same space, one application taking data from the other application's mind. Much in the same way that Inception is very hard to pull off, Spectre is also very hard to pull off. So what's affected by Spectre? Pretty much everything at the smartphone level and up, right? AMD processors, Intel, uh, ARM processors, etc. But what can you do about it? Well, short and sweet, patches and updates are pretty much the only thing you can do about it. But again, I'll provide more information in the description below and I'll cover a little bit more about best practices around security at the end. So let's move on to Meltdown now. Meltdown allows the reading of kernel memory from user space. Well, what does that mean? Basically, a program can access memory of other programs and also the operating system memory. So unlike the Inception example, I can just go and directly read your memory as another application. It does this by taking advantage of something called out of order execution. It's another CPU feature that adds speed. A user space application can be flagged for seeing things it wasn't supposed to see, 
But then as the system notes that, flags it, and then goes to roll back, the application has already seen what it wasn't supposed to see and can therefore take advantage of that information. Even if the CPU says, hey, you weren't supposed to see behind that curtain, the damage has already been done, the information has already been accessed. Oh, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. You see, the application has already seen what it wasn't supposed to see and it can take advantage of that capability and continue doing that over and over and over to pull information from other memory. This one is the more serious of the two in the near term, potentially the worst CPU bug ever. And basically anything that exists as an application could potentially steal data. And it affects basically every desktop, laptop, server on an Intel CPU since 1995. That's how long we've had speculative execution, which is a piece of this puzzle. Yes, over 20 years, but the gig is up. Was that when Toy Story came out? This isn't flying, this is falling with style. So there's a couple processor exceptions in that range, but those are rare, so you can basically assume any Intel CPU since 1995 can be exploited using Meltdown. I don't even know why we bother saying since 1995. I, I don't even know if there's anybody that's running a pre-1995 Intel CPU. I don't know. Now, Meltdown is a relatively easy fix, right? A big bug, big problem, easier fix than Spectre. Meltdown, you're just going to be seeing a lot of patches released, work with your vendors, work with your partners, update, 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 and don't stop, right? So that kind of comes to the summary, right? What do I do about all this? Well, keep calm, keep your OS and your firmware updated. Also, don't run untrusted applications. That's a big key to this. A lot of modern operating systems will warn you that you're about to do this, that you're going to install an untrusted application or one that it can't verify, but use your noggin. Obviously, don't click links that you're suspicious about. Change your passwords often. You should already be doing this. Use two-factor authentication. If you're running Chrome, you can enable site isolation, which will disallow information from going from one tab to the other. I'll put a link in the description below as well if you, wanna, if you wanna see how to do that. How do you know if you are a victim of either Spectre or Meltdown? Well, unfortunately, nobody knows. You can't tell, there's, there's no way of knowing, right? Uh, it, it is, that's the concern here, right? The thing you can do is be smart. Know where your vulnerabilities are and protect against them. Practice excellent security policies, which I'm sure everyone is already doing, right? Now there's a lot of noise about potential CPU degradation. Uh, essentially what that kind of revolves around is with this speculative execution, it's the CPU handing a lot of things to you in parallel. What the patches will do is force those things to happen in a serial manner. So ultimately, rather than having all these things already spread out for you to say, okay, uh, predictive response, okay, the user wants to go this route, bam, it's already there for you, they're all gonna be lined up instead and you'll have different serial functions for different things that you're working on, which requires more from the CPU. That's all that is. All right, so that covers it at a high level. Hope this was helpful. Description's in the link below. Go read those. I know a lot of people aren't really digging into them and just kind of maybe keeping their head in the sand. I hope this video was helpful. I've been getting a ton of questions around this every single day. I didn't really see a video that kind of bold, tried to boil it down as simple as possible and I think maybe I went a little bit too deep on some of this, but hopefully the analogies helped and you can read more in the descriptions below. See ya.